COVID is old news. Can we get something new to freak out about? Bring in disease X. No, no, not Elon's new thing. I want something spicier. New spread about a UK government agency working on a vaccine for a disease X. Anti-vaxxers and jab enthusiasts alike were in uproar over this. And there we go again. It's the bark without the bite. Another example of a doom and gloom headline that we're going to crush on this channel. The new name disease X is actually not new. It's been around for five plus years. It just means it's an unknown disease from an animal, kind of like COVID in that promiscuous bat. They are simply working on a defense against diseases that move from animals to humans. It's just preparation. I don't care what side of the argument you're on. Can't we all agree that a little preparation would be nice? Let's just take a deep breath and move on to worrying about more important things like convincing your wife that toilet paper should roll from the top, not the bottom. Next, TikTokers around the country have allegedly found a new way to make their skin balloons grow, bee pollen. Many influencers made videos claiming that their breasts got bigger after taking bee pollen. Now, before the mosquito bite club gets too excited, there unfortunately is no evidence to support this claim. Your cup size is strongly linked to hormone levels, genetics, weight gain, and weight loss, all of which we have absolutely no insight on into these girls that were on TikTok. Now, they aren't alone. You can also find some men with very strong claims around bee pollen and increasing fertility. Maybe there's something there. I don't know. But again, there's no studies on this. The people I saw touting this were also the ones that were selling bee pollen. So, you know, we walk in a little skeptical on that one. Bee pollen could be fine, obviously, if you aren't allergic to pollen. But these claims are probably too good to be true. Next, a viral video circled the web about the negatives of hitting the snooze button. Mel Robbins stated that you should never hit the snooze button because of sleep inertia. She says, if you hit that snooze, you're going to be in deep sleep in nine minutes and wake up even more tired. Well, guess what, Mel? That's not fair. Let me be the snooze advocate. Some people take that nine minutes and turn into what feels like a century of sleep and they feel reborn. And what if you woke up already in the middle of your sleep cycle anyways? Then what? then you're probably going to be a little sleepy and that extra few minutes could be what you need. Also, I know you know that there are outliers, Mel. Some people like to snooze and they feel great when they do. So if you snooze and lose, quit snoozing. But if you can snooze and cruise, snooze on, Captain. If you're young and you have issues with kidney stones, I bet you I can guess why. It's a dirty little secret, but I'll say it sugar. A recent study showed that people who consumed a quarter of their calories from sugar were 88% more likely to get a kidney stone. Now, for those of you that are thinking, oh, that's insane. A quarter of my calories for a 2000 calorie day, that's only three Cokes. That's it. So when you consume a high level of sugar in your diet, here's what happens simply. Consuming sugar increases the amount of calcium in your urine, which can lead to the formation of kidney stones. Now, I'm not demonizing sugar, just the amount of sugar, especially if you're a heavy consumer and I've had kidney stones. The dose makes the poison always. And it seems that the more and more sugar you consume, you may be more likely to have kidney stone issues. Next, is everyone tired of hearing about intermittent fasting yet? I am, and I did it every single day for two years. Over 700 days of intermittent fasting taught me one thing. I really like breakfast. I was a victim of getting riled up by my favorite online gurus and famous people talking about intermittent fasting. I followed it blindly and was absolutely no better off because of it. I struggled in the gym, struggled to put on muscle, and I missed my favorite meal of the day, breakfast. Now, breakfast isn't for everyone, and that's fine. But intermittent fasting isn't either and shouldn't be forced on everyone. So... You're also getting nearly zero benefit from fasting for only 16 hours, except for one major point. You eat less. It's harder to overeat when you only give yourself a little window. If it works for you, great, but let's stop shoving it down everyone's throat with exaggerated claims. Also, shout out to my breakfast stands out there.